Hello and welcome to CRC, Clinical Research Center. Today we will have a tutorial on external validity and threats to external validity in experimental research design. This will be the last lecture for our experimental research design series. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative lectures on clinical research. A study has external validity to the degree that its results can be extended, generalized, beyond the limited research setting and sample in which they were obtained. A common complaint about research using participants and conducted under the artificial conditions of the laboratory is that it may tell us little about how participants behave under the conditions imposed on them in the much richer arena of the real world. Building on the work of Campbell and Stanley, Bracht and Glass refined and expanded the discussion of threats to external validity and classified these threats into two categories. Threats affecting generalizing to whom that is, threat affecting the groups to which research results. Be generalized make up threats to population validity. Threats affecting generalizing to what that is, threats affecting the settings, conditions, variables, and contexts to which results can be generalized make up threats to ecological validity. The following discussion incorporates the contributions of Bracht and Glass into Campbell and Stanley's conceptualizations, the threats to external validity. Pre-test, treatment interaction occurs when participants respond or react differently to treatment because they have been pre-tested. Pre-testing may sensitize or alert subjects to the nature of the treatment, potentially making the treatment effect different than it would have been had subjects not been pre-tested. Selection, treatment interaction is defined as the non-random or volunteer selection of participants limits the generalizability of the study. Selection treatment interaction, another threat to population validity, occurs when study findings apply only to the non-representative groups involved and are not representative of the treatment effect in the extended population. Multiple treatment interference occurs when participants receive more than one treatment, the effect of the prior treatment can affect or interact with later treatment, limiting generalizability. For example, a researcher wants to compare the effect of caffeine and food supplements on performance. In experiment 1, the research gave caffeine to the participant and recorded the performance. The researcher started the second experiment with a food supplement to measure the performance, without eliminating the effects of caffeine from the previous experiment and recorded the performance. In this way, the cause-effect result cannot be established with a specific product. The specificity of variable is defined as poorly operationalized variables that make it difficult to identify the setting and procedures to which the variables can be generalized. Like selection, treatment interaction, the specificity of variables is a threat to the generalizability of research results regardless of the particular experimental design. Any given study has a specificity of variables, that is, the study is conducted with a specific kind of the participant using specific measuring instruments, at a specific time, and under a specific set of circumstances. The specificity of variables means poorly operationalized variables make it difficult to identify the setting and procedures to which the variables can be generalized. Consider the example of a healthy child. How you have defined healthy in your research will define the outcomes of your study. Treatment diffusion is defined as treatment groups to communicate and adopt pieces of each other's treatment, altering the initial status of the treatment's comparison. When participants in one treatment, the group knows about the treatment received by a different group, they often borrow aspects from that treatment, when such borrowing occurs, the study no longer has two distinctly different treatments but rather has two overlapping ones. The experimenter effects are the conscious or unconscious actions of the researchers affect participants performance and responses. Researchers themselves also present potential threats to the external validity of their studies. A researcher's influences on participants or study procedures are known as experimenter effects. Passive experimenter effects occur as a result of characteristics or personality traits of the experimenter, such as gender, age, race, anxiety level, and hostility level. These influences are collectively called experimenter personal attributes effects. Active experimenter effects occur when the researcher's expectations of the study results affect his or her behavior and contribute to producing certain research outcomes. 
This effect is referred to as the experimenter bias effect. The reactive arrangement is the fact of being in a study that affects participants so that they act in ways different from their normal behavior. Reactive arrangements also called participant effects, are threats to validity that are associated with the way in which a study is conducted and the feelings and attitudes of the participants involved. Hawthorne effect is used to describe any situation in which participants' behavior is affected not by the treatment per SE but by their awareness of participating in a study. John Henry effect occurs, when members of a control group feel threatened or challenged by being in competition with an experimental group and they perform way beyond what would normally be expected. Another reactive arrangement, or participant effect, is the novelty effect, which refers to the increased interest, motivation, or engagement participants develop simply because they are doing something different. This concludes our today's lecture and experimental research design series. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more informative lectures. If you have any questions please contact us at crc.colokium at gmail.com. Thank you.